Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where we talk about tech. Today we are setting up the Sonoff Zigbee USB dongle. If you're not already aware, Zigbee is a type of network standard or protocol. So when you start going along this home automation journey, you may find that some of the devices you purchase don't connect over Wi-Fi, but instead they use Zigbee. I found this out the hard way when I purchased these Philips Hue lights. Now these are amazing, but they don't connect over my standard Wi-Fi. Unlike the lights behind me which connect over Wi-Fi, I'm not able to control my Philips lights through Home Assistant, that is, until I purchased this bad boy, which we're going to set up. Before we dive into the setup, let's explain why these big brands like Philips and Ikea and many others use Zigbee instead of Wi-Fi. This is bringing back memories to network design, but when you have devices connected to Wi-Fi, it's generally what we call a star network. You'll have your Wi-Fi router in the middle and all of your devices will connect into it. This works well for me at the moment, but if you were to add many more devices or you had devices all the way down the other end of your house, which may be ages away from your router, you might run into issues. By using Zigbee, it can set up all of your devices in what they call a mesh network. You'll still have your central router or server for your Zigbee controlling, but every device that you add into the Zigbee network strengthens it. Instead of going from point A to point B all the way down the other end of the house, every device can talk to each other so the more devices you add, the stronger the network gets. It's a great idea which seems to be getting more and more traction. I did a bunch of research online. There are two variants that you can get. You can get the P version, which is more of the more older stable model, or you can get the E variant. Now the E variant comes with a bunch of extra features and supports some extra things, which we're not even gonna dive into in this video, but it can be a bit more experimental. I'm very interested to see how easy or hard this is going to be to set up based on my research. And the second thing, no matter which version of this USB you get, you are going to need to get yourself a USB extender. A very common problem with these Zigbee USB devices is they get a lot of USB interference. So we're simply going to plug this into the USB extender and then plug the other end into our Raspberry Pi. Now that it's plugged in, we're going to remote into our server. I'm just going to quickly go ahead and connect. If you're running Home Assistant in a Docker container like I am, you are going to have to make these changes that I'm about to show you for the auto discovery to work correctly. Go into the folder that you have your Docker Compose file and we're just going to quickly edit it. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you have this devices section added in. And you also want to add this dev volume line to your Docker Compose file. If you don't include these two files, the auto discovery of the USB device that you plugged in will not work. Go ahead, save the file, and you want to run docker compose up minus D to recreate the container, which will apply all those new settings. Now we've got that out of the way, we're going to open up a web browser and go to Home Assistant. We're going to click on notifications and you should see that a new device has been discovered. We're going to go ahead and say check it out. This will take us to the integration screen where we should have a new tab with our Zigbee device. We're going to go ahead and configure it and hit submit. It wants us to create a network. Now I've never done this before so we don't have a backup. I'm going to go ahead and create a network. And finally, we're going to select an area. This is in the office, so I'll just put it in the office. Go ahead and click finish. That's it. We should now be able to connect these two Philips lights behind me to our home assistant. I'm going to go ahead and click on Zigbee Home Automation, and we're going to click on Devices, Add Device via this device. Now for Philips Hue, it seems like you can only connect these lights to one device and it's currently connected to my mobile. So what I'm going to do is go into the Philips Hue app, going to click into one of the lights, light settings, and we're going to reset the device. Home Assistant has now picked it up. I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to say Philips one 
and we're going to assign it to the office. And I'm going to do the same with the second device. So I'm going to go ahead, go into it, and we're going to reset that one as well. Now, both of them are turned white, and I'm hoping we should see the second one eventually pop up in this list. It took about 10 to 20 seconds for it to pop up, so just be a little bit patient. Again, we're going to give it a name, so Philips Hue 2 Office. It says complete, so I'm guessing I can just click out of the screen. And here we have it. I'm gonna click in and just change the color of that one to uh, a bluey color. I generally like having one blue and one orange. We can turn it off, we can turn it on, and it's all working perfectly. Which is awesome, now that these are being controlled through Home Assistant, we can hook it up to our automations and just have everything nicely in sync. That was pleasantly easier than I thought it was going to be. Based on all the research and forums I read through, I thought this was going to be a real pain to set up. But initial impressions of setting up that dongle are, it was really easy. Literally, plug and play. If you're running containers like I showed you, you do have to make a couple of code changes to your Docker Compose file. But apart from that, it automatically configures the integration and you're up and running within five minutes. Something worth mentioning, in this video we used the Zigbee Home Automation Integration. I did see a lot of recommendations saying you should check out Zigbee 2MQTT. That's a tongue twister. If you run into issues, it seems like that might be a good alternative to check out. But it looked like a lot of extra work. But this setup we just went through was really easy and given I've only got two devices right now using the Zigbee protocol, I may just leave things as they are. So that's all I had for you guys today. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Again, I will put links to everything I talked about today, the USB dongle, the extender, in the description down below. If you want to grab one, it does help the channel out. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.